Good afternoon, good afternoon, this great Sunday afternoon. This is Apostle Dr. Carrie White of Refined Heart Outreach Fellowship. I wanted to welcome all of you to our service on this evening. Those of you that are with me by Zoom, those of you that are with me by Facebook uh, Live, I pray God that you're able to hear us okay at this time, amen. I'm gonna check on our Facebook screen. Give me one moment, please, wanna make sure that everything is flowing. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Yes, yes, yes. Well, let's see. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Did it go live? Yes, it says it's live. There. Yes, absolutely. There it is. Praise our God. Hallelujah. Well, good afternoon again. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Sister Nur Jahan, Minister Keita, Brother Hopkins, amen. We thank you for being here and early with us today. I pray, God, that you enjoyed uh, that, that, that um, video. I, I love watching um, mine when it is in worship, when it is expressing uh, the, 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 the message behind the song. I love it. So, um, yes, the holy, 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 yes, is the Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and which is to come. Amen. Let me pray us in. Amen. And, and as we get started today, um, this has been a powerful, this is a powerful message that God has given for us to, to go over today. Let me uh, invite him in. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for this day that you have made for us to rejoice, to be exceedingly great, glad in to. Lord, I thank you that we uh, awakened this morning, that you allow breath to continue in our bodies and you allowed our, our minds to, to remain cognizant and aware that our eyes opened up this day, that we are able to interact with the world that you have placed us in. God, I thank you for life itself that we are alive today. Lord God, we may be going through situations and circumstances, but we are yet going through them. I thank you, God, that it, it's just another uh, a, a way of knowing that I am alive. God, I thank you for being with us today for this message that you dropped in my spirit today. God, I thank you for what you're going to say to us today. I'm listening for your voice, even as the 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 the, the um, worshipers were showing, were saying we need to listen for the voice of God. I'm listening for your voice, God, and I'm asking you to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, Lord, that you would clear out the pipeline so that I can be the conduit that would that you are able to pour through by your Spirit and reach and and teach and touch your people, including me, God. I am excited about what it is that you have to say to us today. And Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will prepare our hearts to receive the seed of the word. I pray, God, that you will prepare our spirits to, to water that word. Hallelujah. I pray, God, that this seed will not only take root, but it will bear fruit, fruit that is a, that we're able to be effective in those that are around us that we come in contact with. God, I'm looking for miracles to happen through this word. I thank you for what you're planning to do, Lord God. I'm excited about what it is, Lord, that you've got churning in my spirit, and it's in Jesus' name. I lift this word up to you, Lord God, and ask you, Holy Spirit, take full control. None of me, all of you, do what you do best. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Guys, I am excited about this word. Yes, yes, yes. The, the word today the message that God dropped in my spirit. It was interesting because what I heard, I was I was putting some things together and 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 I heard the, the, the in my spirit the day. And I thought I heard the day the earth stood still. And Holy Spirit corrected me and said, no, no, the day the sun stood still. You know, back in the 19, back, uh, there was a movie that was made back in the 1950s uh, called The Day the Earth Stood Still. And it was remade here, uh, maybe around 2005, 2008, some time frame around in there. They remade the movie, they updated it. Uh, they remade the movie with Keanu Reeves and, and, and uh, you know, um, 
the day the earth stood still and and you know uh back in the day the 1950s movie i love that movie uh you know i loved uh uh, uh klaatu klaatu was that robot was that that uh, that guardian that that um uh, 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 that big he-man he metal guardian that, 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 that stood still until uh, things happened to cause it to move into action whenever the, that one that he was given um, the, the responsibility for uh, was was attacked. Then that 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 guardian started moving, right? And it started taking taking out everything in its path, right? And uh, you know, then we see uh, even in the remake uh, with Keanu Reeves that 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 guardian is there, and they've tried they try everything to try to 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 uh, hold it back, keep it down, what figure out what it is or what have you, and and the next thing you know, it just takes over. <laughs> I love that one little scene where the where the little light looks up and it follows the guy around. Yeah, okay, you think you got somebody in a trap? I got you. But anyway, that's me. I love sci-fi movies, guys. I love sci-fi movies, and uh, you know the the day the earth stood still is one of my favorites, both versions of it. But so when it dropped in the spirit, I thought Holy Spirit was talking to me about the movie, and then God said, No, 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 not the day the earth stood still, but the day the sun stood still. And 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 He said, Go back and go find it. Go find it. It's it's, it's in Joshua. And I went back into Joshua and I started reading again, and and I remember. Remember, oh, there was a day that the sun did not move. There was a day that the sun stood still. So I went back. I want you to go back with me, if you would, turning your Bibles to Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. Now, we're going to talk about a few things, but, but our base scriptures are in Joshua chapter 10. I'm going to read it to you, read it for you. Amen. Um, so, I, you know, kind of sit back for a second. I'm going to be reading starting in verse one. I, I know where we're, we're really talking about is uh, probably around verse 10. Uh, let's see, going from Joshua 10, uh, verse 12, uh, or, or to 15 or 16, but I want to read the, the starting in verse one because I need to give you the, the, the flavor of the situation. I need to give you some background. We're going to talk about some background to this as well, but let me read this to you right quick. Amen. Oh my, I need to clean my glasses. Uh-huh. Uh, so it says in Joshua 10, one, I'm going to read it kind of from the King James version. Now it came to pass when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and her king. So he had done to Ai and her king and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them that they greatly they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city and as one of the royal cities and because it was greater than Ai and all the men thereof were mighty. Wherefore, at, um, at, Adonai Zadik, Zadik, excuse me, Adonai Zadik, king of Jerusalem, sent it to Hohem, king of Hebron, and Piram, king of Jarmuth, and Japhia, king of Lachish, and under Debar, excuse me, Debar, king of Eglon, saying, Come up unto me and help me that we may smite Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore, the five kings of the Amorites, notice who are, they are, the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp of Tegilal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwelt in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended unto Gigal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore uh, came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomforted them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Horam and smote them to Azaka. I may not have said that word right, forgive me. And unto Makeda. 
And it came to pass as they fled from Israel and were going down to Bethorum that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah. And they died. They were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then Joshua spake to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is this not, is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of the heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel, and Joshua returned in all Israel with him unto the camp to Gilgal. Amen. Now, there was a little bit more to this, but I'm going to read that in a little bit later. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, let's let's just talk with a little bit first about this story. I mean, I'm, did y'all hear what I said? Did you hear what the Spirit of the Lord had the men of God write back in the day so that we could be encouraged by this word? What did I read to you? Listen, I'm going to read that a little bit again. It said, then Joshua spake to the Lord, in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Agilon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a day, about a whole day. And there was no day like it before it or after it that the Lord hearkened it to the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. Do you hear what I'm saying right here? The day, hmm, the day the sun stood still. My God, my God. Oh, ah, yes, yes, yes. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I don't know if you're excited with me, but I am. Praise the Lord. Joshua, that was Joshua 10, uh, uh, roundabout. Verse uh, six is where we're talking about uh, uh, Joshua and Israelites are fighting the five kings of the Amorites. Let's talk about that for a second. Uh, if you remember, and, and when we did the, the message on this time, uh, you know, evict the squatters, we talked about the seven nations that were greater, greater and mightier that God told, told the Israelites, you're going to go into your land of promise, but there are already nations living there. There's already people there and they are greater and they are mightier than you, but you don't need to be afraid because I'm with you, right? Hallelujah. Where did he say that at? Um, you know what? That that that's back in do 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 do. I do believe it's Deuteronomy, around about yeah the seventh chapter. Deuteronomy seven. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. In verse eighteen of Deuteronomy seven, he said, Thou shalt not be afraid of them but shall well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. Hey, oh, come on, somebody. God is saying, you need to remember what I've done for you in times past. What has he done for you in times past? Things that were totally extraordinary, things that, that you, there is no explanation for. God has showed himself up and showed himself strong. He has stood up, showed up, and showed out on your behalf. God is saying, I need you to remember those things. Why? Because we're in a, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm caught up in it. Let's go on with it. Yeah, because we're in a season right now. We're in a season where there's all kinds of uh, things going on, where we got nations greater and mightier than us that are coming against us. Now, I'm not talking about nations as far as political uh, uh, entities. I'm talking about things, nations like COVID, nations like poverty, nations like sickness, nations like cancer, nations like um, 
uh, domestic abuse, de uh, nations like violence, uh, uh, murder. Uh, we got all things going on. We've got the love of many waxing cold. We've got famines, earthquakes. We've got pestilences. We've got things going on in all diverse places. We got all kinds of nations greater and mightier than us that are happening to us even right now. And God is saying, I need you to remember what I took you through, what I brought you out of, what I did for you. I need you to remember who I am and whose you are so that you will not be a afraid. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me come on back to the story. Praise God. The day the sun stood still. Ah, yes, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that, 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 that's the big picture. You know, the first 13 chapters of the book of Joshua basically uh, uh, tells this story, right? Moses led the, led the Israelites to the edge of the promised land, right? But he's died now. Uh, uh, that's in Joshua um, 1, right? And Moses has got, he's got his handpicked successor with Joshua, young man, young man, yes, that has proven that he trusts God and he believes the word of, the, uh, uh, of God, amen. And Joshua has been given the task to take the people on across the Jordan River and into the promise. They had to cross, they had to cross the river coming, the, cross the sea coming out of bondage, and now they needed to cross the river to go into their promise, amen. You got to cross sometime. You got to cross, you got to come out, you got to go in. Come on, somebody. But there's a slight problem here. There are people, like I said, they're already there and they're stronger, they're mightier than them. They got big armies, they got strong cities, they've got fortified walls. And then you just have the, the, this group of nomads. Yeah, that's what they really were. They were just, you remember, they were exiles. They, they were refugees. They had just left Egypt, right? Uh, as refugees in exile. Yes, they spoiled Egypt, but come on, somebody, think about who they were. What, what they were, they were just a small band of people, but they were God's chosen. Listen, we, in the, and those of us that name the name of Christ, name the name of Jesus, those of us that believe in the, the one true and living God, we may be small when it's compared to the the, the multitude of, uh, uh, of religious beliefs that are out there in the world or those that have no beliefs out there in the world. We may be small, but guess what? We got the one that, that, that that's on our side that can cause the sun, amen, to stand still. Come on, somebody. So here we go. You know, it would be understandable, right? If Joshua was kind of scared, uh, if he was afraid of what was before him, but scriptures tells us that God told him multiple times, don't be afraid, be of good courage. Uh, you know, um, it, it is in Joshua 1, uh, I believe it is, let me see, hold on, hold on, let me find it, let me find it. Uh, Joshua 1, God told uh, Joshua, every place the sole of your foot shall tread that have, have I given unto you from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river. Hallelujah. And he said in verse 5, not, there shall not be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. Praise the Lord for that lineage. Hallelujah. And would, wouldn't that be awesome to hear the Spirit of the Lord speak to us and say, and he is saying it, as I was with Moses, as I was with Joshua, as I was with David, hallelujah, as I was with Paul, as I was with Peter, as I was with uh, 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 Jude, and I'm talking about Jude, Jude, you know, the brother of Jesus after he got converted, a as I was with them, as I was with Stephen when he was being stoned, as I was with Mary when, when, when she said where they laid him, <coughs> as I was with them, I'm with you. Hallelujah. We don't have to be afraid of all this stuff that's going on. You know, not, because yesterday was uh, the 20th anniversary of a, uh, of a horrible, tragic time here in our country. Amen. And there were... <clears throat> quite a few things that were being uh, shared on the television about in remembrance and, and we shall not forget. Well, I'll tell you, I won't forget because I had a family member that was di that died in that tower, uh -huh, in the North Tower. I will not forget because I had a, a family member that was a flight attendant for United. I will not forget, but I didn't need to be reminded or see all those scenes over and over again. What, what, what does that do? Yes, we need to not forget, but we also do, don't need to be caught up in fear. We don't need to be caught up in, in that the uh, and paralyzed with fear of all the stuff that's been going on. Yes, there's more hacking going on. There's, <coughs> excuse me, there's all kinds of uh, uh, terroristic uh, attacks that are going on in the world. We've got famine going on in the world. We've got pestilence going on in the world. We've got tsunamis going in one place, hurricanes in another place, uh, raging fires in another place. The earth is opening up in one end and is, is standing up on another. 
all kinds of things are going on, but we do not have to be afraid. God has told us he is with us. It is the day, glory be unto God, that the sun stood still. Hold on one second, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, that helps my throat, <clears throat> something warm. Amen, hallelujah. You know, we may have a daunting task in front of us because listen, we are still in the day of Matthew 28 where God has told us that, to go ye into all the world and, 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 and teach them. Uh-huh, they the make disciples starting, hey man, in your home, yeah, right, he said, <clears throat> and then go to your neighbor, that's Samaria, you know, starting in Jerusalem, that's home, Samaria, that's your neighbor, and then other most parts of the world, that's the rest of the, you know, community going, just, you need to start home and, and, and expand out, talk to your neighbors, talk to your brothers, talk to your family, talk to your, your work, peers, whatever, we need to be effective in the Great Commission, amen, we need to keep doing what God has told us to do, don't let the situations and the circumstances that we are finding ourselves in. I don't know why God has taken me there. That's, that's not part of my notes. But don't let the situations, the circumstances, the, 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 the climate that we are in right now cause us to, to cower back and to shut down and not, not continue to witness to people of the love of God. God still loves us. Amen. With all of that's going on, even with preachers dying, with churches shutting, everything that's going on, God still loves us. Amen. Come on, somebody. Understand that these things are going on, but they are not to hold us back, to cause us to sit down and, and what, on our hands and go, woe is me. As a matter of fact, it should put some fire in our belly and get us to go and forth and talking about the love of God and talking about the hope of God and talking about the one that can make the sun stand still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me go on back to my message. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Lord wasn't calling Mo, uh, Joshua to stand up without giving him the, the help he needed. The Lord wasn't calling him without enabling him. God gave him three, th three good reasons to be strong. He said, first, I give you a promise. And then I give you my word and I'm with you. How? Yes, and it was his promise in Joshua 1, 5. No one will be able to stand against you in the days of your life, all the days of your life. Joshua 7, 8. He said, don't let the book, uh, excuse me, Joshua 1, verse 7 and 8. Don't let the book of this all depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. Be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So we got God's uh, promise in one five. Nobody will be able to stand against you as long as you are doing what? God's word, seven, eight. Don't let the word uh, fall out of your mouth. Amen. Meditate on it, prosper and speak it. Amen. Guide it. Let it make you prosperous and successful. And then God's presence. And Joshua 1, 9, when he said, be strong and courageous, don't be terrified, don't be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. God has given us his promise. God has given us his word, and God has said his presence will go with us. Amen. So here we are. You have the story where the Israelites now have dipped their toes in the, in the Jordan. Hallelujah. And, and they're, they're heading west. In the first city, they come to a Jericho, the most fortified city of all of Canaan, right? And But it's not strong enough to withstand what God has done. And notice this. God didn't allow them to do anything. God did everything, right? The very first city, he said, y'all, march around it. Don't say a word. Just march around it every, once a day, every day. March around it seven days. On the seventh day, march around it seven times. And then at the seventh time, at the, at the signal, everyone give a shout, blow the horn in Zion. Come on, somebody. And the walls of Jericho fell down flat. They just collapsed. Uh huh. Well, you know what? They fell down, not in, in a trouble, not in a rubble. They didn't fall down uh, in, uh, disconcerted. They came down in pattern. Why? It says they walked over them. Hallelujah. Though if they were crackling and falling, they might the rocks might have fell on somebody. No, they said the walls fell down flat. Hallelujah. Boom. Walk on in. And why? There was, a, there was a woman there named Rahab. She said, listen, we know y'all were coming. We've heard about y'all. We knew what you did on the other side. That's in Joshua 2. She said that your terror is falling on us. They were already afraid of this little group of people. Listen, the world is already afraid of us. That's why they do so much to try to dis, um, 
to to ruin the reputation and ruin the effect of ru ruin the 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 witness ruin uh, uh what the christian is to, and i'm saying christian being Chris, christ like i'm not saying christian as far as just a label or, or, or a cross around your neck i'm talking about those of the believer amen the, or the world is doing the enemy is doing so much to to uh, taint distort and mess up our witness he comes to kill to steal and to destroy and if you can't block our reputation if you can't stop us from doing what god has given for us to do he'll try to stop our reputation he'll stop try to stop us by reputation he'll try to get people to not accept us not believe us not walk with us come on somebody understand that that the terror of us is out there in the world and therefore the world is attempting to block us come on somebody mm -hmm. but but notice that it, rahab talked about that she said in verse um Joshua 2 11. When we heard these things, our hearts melt. Our hearts didn't melt. They were scared. They were already afraid of them. Mm. And they hadn't done anything in the promised land yet. But as they moved on, they moved to the next, next place. But listen, here's the problem. They moved to AI, but when they first went to AI, they, they got put. Why? 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 If they did if Josh Jericho fell without any, any help from man at all, from the group at all. Why, when they sent a few men to AI, did, did they get whipped? Well, well, it was because they were disobedient. Remember, I told you that Joshua 1, I believe it was, um, uh, 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 well, where is it? It was in Joshua 7. God told him, he said, listen, when you go up into Jericho, no, 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 it was Joshua 6. He said, uh, the city is under a ban. It and all that belongs in it, belongs to the Lord, only that Rahab the harlot and all those who are with her in the house shall live because she hid the messengers whom I sent. But as for you, only keep yourselves. In other words, guard yourself, stop, don't do it. Mm -hmm. From the things under the ban, do not covet them and do not take any of the things under the ban. They said all the silver, the gold, the articles of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord and they shall go into the treasury of the Lord. In other words, that, that city was the type. That city was the type of what God was going to do in that land. But there was a guy named Achan, and Achan said he saw, and I believe it's down around in, um, uh, what is it, Joshua 7. Achan told them, he said, I saw a beautiful robe from Babylon, 200 silver coins, a bar of gold weighed more than a pound. I wanted them so much that I took them. That's 721. And I'm reading out of the New Living Standard version on that one, okay? On that, I'm, I go back and forth between, just so you know, the King James Version, the New American Standard, and the New Living Translation, because sometimes it's a little easier to understand when you use one of the other translations. My favorite, however, is the King James. I study the King James, that's that, and I understand the language of the King James. I prefer it. It's more poetic, it's, but for... Uh, understandable for you know readability sake I switch up okay so basically uh, what Aiken did he saw some stuff and he took it and he said he hid it under his tent and because he disobeyed God he caused uh, the whole the camp to be accursed uh, to be under a curse why because he had broken God's rule he had broken God's law he had taken that thing which it was uh, uh, which was holy unto the Lord and he had defamed it and until he was dealt with they couldn't go any further God God's presence promised to be with them as long as what they 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 followed they followed the rules hmm I mean really so he was dealt with we won't get into all of how he was dealt with. If you want to read that, you can go back to Joshua 7 and uh, to, uh, Joshua 8. But after he was dealt with, uh-huh. And why, you know, you say, well, why was God so harsh on that one? Because they needed to have faith in God and they needed to obey the general. They needed to obey the rules. They were moving into a land, like I said, with seven nations greater and mightier than them. If, if, in order for them to be okay, in order for them to, to, to um, be successful in what God has given for them to do, they needed to obey. They needed to walk in obedience. They needed to do things according to the pattern God had given them. Amen. Understand that God wasn't being mean. No. He told him to put the things in the treasury. Why? Because guess what? That, that, that was used later for other reasons, for other things. But listen, if God is saying this, this thing here is holy for me, don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. 
Amen. I'm just going to say, don't do it. Okay. Hallelujah. So they went past AI and they went back to AI and they, they, they were successful. Okay. And, and now everybody's heard about them hitting AI and they know AI was, was, was even more uh, strategic than Jericho. And if they can, they, they, you know, can beat AI, then they got scared. So it says the Gibeonites, uh, they, they, they came up with a, um, a lie. They 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 said, "Listen, we're going to disguise ourselves, and and we're going to act like we're from afar, and we're going to make a treaty with them, and and uh, knowing that if they followed uh, their rules, uh, which meant that you know when you say yay, your yay is yay, no your nay is nay, and if you make an oath or a vow, you don't break it. If you make a covenant, you you honor that covenant. What a covenant meant was that you would die for to keep your word. You would die for that other person." Mm -hmm. So they, they, they deceived them. And because and scripture tells us in, uh, um, I believe it's, it's, where is it? Hmm. I, I'll find it, but it's, it's around Joshua nine, somewhere in there. But the key of it is they made the plan to trick Joshua and Joshua didn't go to God first. He looked at the outward appearance they look like they were from afar. They look like they've been traveling a long time and, 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 and they, they had the right story and they had the right look. And so Joshua accepted them for, for their word's sake. He did not go to before God. And then three days later, he found out that they had lied. How many times? Yeah, we're going to talk about the sun stand, stand still, but how many times have we taken people on face or taken situations on face value by what it looks like? We even talked about that when we were talking about no excuses when we were dealing with the book of Jude um uh in in uh, previous sessions about how uh, you know they were false they appeared okay but they were false they creeped in unawares ungodly men creeping in unawares these were ungodly men that creeped in unawares they came in looking like something looking like something different than what they really were and in order to manipulate and to receive the blessing of the covenant ones because see by becoming an alliance with the ones that were in covenant with god they are now in covenant with god out yeah there are some that will try to, to to come into your your um uh make alliances with you in order to re to to assume or or become part of your blessing so you got to be careful of who you make vows with who you make alliances with what you do amen because guess what the places are blessed because we're there you heard me yes when the blessed are, are in the midst, then the blessing is in the midst. You got to be careful. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So it said Joshua signed a peace treaty with him. Three days later, he found out mm, they, they were lying, but now he's given their word. He sworn an oath. Joshua 9, um, yeah, Joshua 9, 14 said they did not consult the Lord. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, Joshua made a peace treaty with them, guaranteed their safety, and ratified their agreement with a binding oath. In other words, he made a covenant. And by doing so, as the leader, he now is held accountable. So when the um, Gibeonites are under attack, we're going to slip on down to Joshua 10 now. It said the king of Jerusalem... And uh, he hears that the Gibeonites have defected to the Israelites. In other words, they've made a peace treaty and he knows that their city is even better and bigger and stronger than his. Then he decides to go and get, you know, make an alliance with some other kings. All of them, all five of them get together and they're going to go and they're going to attack. Right. All right. So here's the thing. When the men of Gibeon find out that they're on their way, they send word to, give to Joshua and say, listen, you got to come and save us because you made a covenant with us. So because Joshua made that word, even though these are not uh, God's people, these are not of uh, the covenant promise, they are now of the promise because they have been in covenant with Joshua. So he, they got to go. So it says that they, went, they ran all night. They moved all night. They marched all night to get to the area, to, uh, to Gibeon. Uh-huh. And then God has assured them that they will have victory, right? And now we're dealing with the sci-fi movie. Come on. 
because here they, they 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 get there and and they start fighting with them and, and, and they're coming up from the rear right because they're already surrounded Gibeon so Joshua and his men are coming up from the rear and it says that God starts raining down hailstones and more of them were killed by hailstones than 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 by Israelite sword well guess what even though the hailstones were killing the gift the uh, the Amorites it wasn't hitting the Israelites that's miracle number one come on how are you gonna be in a hailstone stone hailstorm that will kill everybody if that's your enemy but it doesn't kill you and you're in the midst fighting see god can do what he can do even though you're in the midst of a mess you can still be saved come on somebody you can still be protected in the midst of the mess as long as you are operating according to God's uh, uh, design, if you are uh, following God's rule, if you are following what God has told you to do, as long as you're in the plan and the purpose of God, it doesn't matter what kind of mess is going on around you. You can be protected in the midst of it. Amen. Be strong and be of good courage for the Lord thy God is with thee. Amen. Hallelujah. And then at the request, notice this in, in Joshua 14, uh, 10, 14, at Joshua's request, God, Joshua asked God, stop the sun and the moon. And guess what? God stopped the sun. Said it didn't move. It didn't go down for a whole day. The moon stayed in its tracks and the sun stayed in its tracks. Now there are some going to try to say, oh, you know what? That ain't nothing but a fairy tale. That could not have happened. Mm hmm. Well, uh, you know, the earth, if the earth stops spinning, because, you know, there's some say the reason that the sun, the sun doesn't move, but it's the earth that moves. And because the earth is moving uh, 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 that, and if the earth stopped moving and it's spinning, everything would have flown out. But I just dare to say that the one that made everything, the one that created it all, the one that knows and, and set all the laws of physics in place, he can do what he wants to do with whatever physics he want to do with. Amen. So whether he had the sun moving with the earth or whether he stopped the earth from moving or whether he stopped things from turning, whatever he did, the sun stood still for over a day. At the request of a man. What impossible thing have you asked God for? Believing and knowing that God will answer you. Hallelujah. Is your heart right before God? Why? God did that to honor Joshua's word because Joshua honored his word, even though he made a mistake. So come on, somebody. We may not have done things right. We would not, He didn't make that mistake willingly. He didn't. He just did not consult God first. We need to consult God, y'all. Come on, somebody. We need to be talking to God because our enemy will attempt to deceive us. He will attempt to get us caught up in crosshairs. Hallelujah. But even so, Joshua made a mistake. And he acknowledged his mistake, but he kept his word. He stayed in integrity before God. Listen, we can find ourselves in situations that we, we really didn't look at it real good before we got ourselves caught and entangled up in the mess, but walk in integrity before God. Hallelujah. Don't let your word be uh, become a lie. Yeah. Let your yay be yay, your nay be nay. If you said you're going to do a thing, do a thing. Amen. There's a situation even for me and in, in, in coming up in a few days where I had made a promise to do something, a certain thing, and, and, and something else has come up that is, that is very important. Well, I did not decline doing what I promised to do. What is, and as I was even talking with my um, apostle earlier today, and, and I was saying, listen, it's going to be a rough day for me next weekend. It's going to be rough on me, but I've got to honor my word. I've got to do what I said I was going to do on both ends. So that means I need you to pray for me because my, this is going to be a, a bit of a type for me physically. Amen. It's going to be, a, be, be a, um, a, a bit of a reach for me physically and financially to do what I need to do, but I've got to keep my word. Listen, not only did, does that show right here, did the sun stand still, but notice hailstorm, hailstones that killed everybody, ex, the enemy, but not the, not the blessed ones, not the covenant ones. You got the sun standing still so that nightfall doesn't fall and, and they can now they can still see to finish out the battle to, to, to conquer their enemies. Hallelujah. Because Joshua said, we're running out of time. God, hold the sun. 
We don't need to run out of time. We got to be able to see what we need to see. We need to see where they're going, what they're doing. Help us now, Lord. And the sun stood still and the moon stood still. Not only did the day the sun stood still, but the moon did too. Hallelujah. And he told them where to stand. Hallelujah. He not only told the sun to stand still, but he told them where to stand still. He told the moon where to stand still. Hallelujah. You can be specific with God and ask God to do this, what you think is the impossible and it can be done if your heart is right before God and it is according to his plan and according to his purpose for your life. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The sun and the moon stood still and prolonged the hours that the Israelites could continue to pursue and to destroy their foe so they could not escape into the security of their walled cities. See, they had come out of their cities. They had come out of their fortified places. Joshua was saying, Lord, let us get, help us to get them. We need the time to get them before they can get back home. And guess what? God did that for them. Hallelujah. Don't matter about the law of physics. If the one that created everything can make everything do something different, stand up and start tap dancing, guess what? It will. Hallelujah. But not only that, it said this battle is a tremendous undertaking for Israel himself. Israel themselves, why? They marched all night and they have now fought through the longest day in history. They not only fought through a regular day, but because God caused the sun to stand still for a whole day, guess what? For a whole nother day, they basically have been fighting with no rest, no food. They can't take a break. They got to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Is there something that God has told you to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, keep at it? Don't let, don't get tired. Don't get weary in well-doing. He will strengthen you. He's at your side. He will help you to go beyond the ordinary limits of, of what you think you can do. God will supernaturally empower you to accomplish the thing whereinto he has given for you to do. Come on, somebody. God gave them the victory. Hallelujah. This march that was uphill, that took hours, these troops that are exhausted and finally at the point where the battles are to be waged, they didn't even take a breather. While the day is beginning, they launched into attack. They caught them by surprise. Amen. It says in verse 10 that the Lord confused the enemy and, and, and chased them and they chased them. Listen, they've been marching all night. They're tired. They're, they're weary. It's morning time. They ain't stopped to eat. They haven't stopped to do anything. They're already in the battle the, and the uh, their enemy is running and they're chasing them and they're overtaking them. They're pursuing, they're overtaking and they're conquering all. Come on, somebody. It's a miracle. Hallelujah. Hell storms, stones are falling, but they're not being hit. It's a miracle. The soldiers are being reminded that God is concerned for them. Though he will take out their enemy, he's keeping them protected. Hallelujah. They're running out of daylight, but God stops the sun. Let's the sun stay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at what God is doing. Ah, God is, uh, is doing what God is doing. Praise the Lord. Anybody with any sense would know that God is able to make all grace abound toward you. When you are walking in purpose, when you're walking by the spirit, when you're walking in faith and not by sight, when you don't say, oh, Lord, we're about to lose. We're about to lose. The daylight's running out. No, no, no. Starts with look. So the daylight was running out. How did God stop sun? Glory be unto God. And I got a feeling that, and I don't know, it's not in scripture, but I have a feeling he had to stop a particular place because that sun was probably blinding the enemy. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. Someday you will see that light. God is the answer. He consented to answer a man's prayer for a miraculous event. But can I tell you, God will consent to answer your prayer for the miraculous to occur if you would be just bold enough to ask him. Ask in prayer, believing. If you would say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thy cast into the sea, it will obey you. That's scripture, y'all. God's given us his promise, he's given us his, his word, and he's given us his promise. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. There is a miracle that is there for you. Whatever the greatest need is in your life, God is ready. Hold on one second. God is ready. God is ready. He is ready. Whatever miracle it is that you need, God is ready to perform on your behalf. Hallelujah. God is ready to perform on your behalf. There are miracles that are, we call them miracles. We call them the super over the natural. But guess what? 
if the one that created it all desires it to be a certain way, it will. But you've got to trust and obey. There's this old song, an old hymn I used to sing a lot. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. We've got to trust him in the midst of this season, in the midst of this situation, in the midst of these times in which it looks like the great mighty army of, of, of all the, 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 the things that are going on in the world will crush us. In a season where it is no longer, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? It's, it's no longer fashionable to be a Christian. In a season where we're being called a hate group. Yeah, we are. In this season, trust and obey. Be careful of the alliances that you make. Be careful of the, 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 the relationships that, uh, check it out before you jump too quick, jump too soon. Even in the, in the midst of, of, of romantic relationships, I need to say that to somebody that's gonna be watching this by Facebook, by, by replay. What, check it out before you make that, that, that romantic uh, covenant. Ask God first, consult God first. I ain't saying don't get married. I'm saying consult God. Time it might not be right. Or it might be you waiting too long. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just hearing in that romantic, somebody's going to be watching this thing by replay. And in that romantic relationship, consult God first. And you'll know who you are when you see this. Amen. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I apologize as someone that does not know that I do services on Sunday afternoon. Okay. All right. So Jeremiah 33, three says, call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show you great and mighty things, which you know, it's not, which you don't understand. Call unto him and he will answer and he will show you stuff that will blow your mind. Hallelujah. We've got an enemy to fight. We don't have to worry about whether or not we'll finish the battle. We don't have to worry whether or not we'll run out of energy. We don't have to worry about uh, uh, whether we can be successful. God will help us. Amen. Because we're fulfilling the promise, fulfilling the charge that he has given us. So trust and obey. But there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. There was a little bit more I was going to share with you on this, but the hour has grown late. It's four, almost four o'clock. So I'm going to just stop right there. Praise the Lord. And uh, uh, let me pray. Oh my goodness. What is going on here? All this going on here. I saw, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. That's okay, Dr. Kerry. That, that was the Lord calling you. <laughs> and then he was saying, okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Praise the Lord. So uh, since you unmarked un yourself, Brother Hopkins, uh, if you have something you would like to say, please do. The floor is open. We'll pray after. Okay. It sounds like a plan to me. Mm -hmm. And as usual, what you were saying is on time, on target. Matter of fact, you dropped all the mortars right where the mortars were supposed to be as usual. Oh, Lord. All the Lord did was call in the grid coordinates to you and you dropped them and they all hit. Praise the Lord. So ain't nothing but a thing. As like we used to say in the army, ain't nothing but a thing. So we appreciate you and love you, my sister. Amen. <laughs> I can trust my brother to bring up the military terms. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. The door is open. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I almost jumped when I heard that ringtone like that. That's the same ringtone for the Peace Corps. <laughs> I was like, who's calling me on a Sunday? What world? Anyway. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I concur. Same thing with Michael. You know, just always on time and on target. So I don't really have no words. It was just... um. 
a great message and something that we needed to hear. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? I'm going to check our Facebook while um, feel free to unmute yourself if you have something you would like to share. All right, I don't see any comments on the Facebook. So I'm gonna pray us out and then uh, shut down our Facebook live. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray God. And then what was said was what you wanted said. And Lord, if I said anything more than what you intended, I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask God that you would even remove it from the memory, remove it even from the recording. And I pray God that if there's something that I did not say that you would like to have said, Lord, bring it back to my remembrance. I promise to open up my mouth and speak whatever it is that you would have me to speak. I thank you for those that are listening, Lord, by Facebook, those that are watch my replay, those that are here with me live. I thank you for this word, Lord God. Let us be encouraged that there is nothing too hard for God, that you are able to make all grace abound toward us, that no matter what the situation or the circumstance, even when we put mess up and find ourselves in a situation that we really were not supposed to be in, God, we can still rely on you. We can still trust in you. And Lord God, know that you are yet able to watch over us, to protect us, to provide for us. Lord, I thank you for loving us beyond measure. Hallelujah. Thank you for what you have done for each and every one of us, Lord God, and how much you love the world. And, and Lord, that you gave your son for every one of us, for all in the world, but we all have to make the choice for you. And once we make that choice, you said, hallelujah, that we would, when we love you, when we believe you, when we call upon you, when we ask you, that you will do great and mighty things on our behalf, things that will blow our very minds. And I thank you, Lord God, when we ask in faith, believe Leaving, we can trust that you will answer. So it's in Jesus' name that I offer this prayer and this message to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Oof, amen. And one moment while I stop the Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And one moment while I stop the recording. <laughs> 